Hi, I'm Richard McPherson. I'm the Chief Instructor at Let's Ride Motorcycle Training and in this lesson I'm going to show you how to use gears. Okay, so let's talk about gears. So here is your gear shifter on the left side where your left foot will be. And this gear shifter will only either go down or it'll only go up. Uh, now, bikes have either five or six gears and the bike you'll be using on the CBT, the, the YBR 125 here, has five gears. Now, each gear uh, is a compromise between torque and speed. So torque is, is basically turning force of the engine and we, we need torque for acceleration so when we're pulling away from a standstill or we just need to get moving quickly uh, or we need torque for climbing steeper hills um, so a, a gear either have lots of torque or it'll give you speed and there's various levels to each gear so gear one gives you all torque and very little speed Gear two then shifts a bit of that torque towards the speed area and so on and so forth until we get to top gear. So fifth gear in this bike's case, in which case it's got very little torque, but that's where all your speed is. That's your top speed, which on this little bike is around about sort of 50, 55 miles per hour. But if you're in fifth gear, that means we don't have an awful lot of torque. So we can't use fifth gear to pull away from a standstill. There simply isn't enough turning force in that engine to get the machine moving with you sat on it as well. Uh, likewise, if you're going up a steep hill, uh, you might find that the fifth gear doesn't have enough torque to, to pull the bike up the hill. So it starts to struggle, the engine starts to bog down, you start to slow down, in which case you need to use a, a lower gear, which gives you more torque, but obviously at a sacrifice of speed. So it, which gear depends on the scenario of the riding? I mean, if you're just cruising along, at say 30 miles per hour, you're probably going to be in fourth or fifth gear um, because it's a nice relaxed pace. The engine speed is quite low, so you've got fuel economy there. But if you need to accelerate quickly from a standstill, it's got to be first gear on these little machines. I mean, you could maybe do second gear, uh, but it's going to struggle a little bit in second and it's very difficult to pull away in third gear and pretty much impossible in fourth and fifth on these little bikes here. Okay, so um, it's all about sort of matching the road speed with the gear that you're using, listening to the engine, is it struggling, is it revving too high, in which case we need to go up to the next gear, is it revving too low, is there no, is there no torque, in which case drop it down a gear, so it's listening and reacting to what the bike is telling you. And this all comes with practice, I and mean, once you're on the car park, you'll, you'll hear the engine, you'll feel it, you understand if it's protesting underneath you. And of course, we'll be explaining it all to you over the radio as well. There's also one more position in the gears and that's neutral position. So that is when the gearbox is not engaged to the engine at all. So it doesn't matter what you're doing with the throttle or the clutch or anything like that, you're not going anywhere. So you can be revving the bike right up, but because the bike's in neutral, you're not going to go anywhere. Now, uh, if you went through the last video with the controls of the bike, you'll have remembered the neutral light. So uh, if you want to know if you're in neutral, you can refer to the neutral light on the instrument panel there, that green light, and that tells you that the engine is not engaged to the gearbox, which means it doesn't matter what we're doing with that throttle, we're not going anywhere. However, that being said, some bikes, certainly the cheaper bikes, you can have a false neutral. So the green light is on, but the gearbox is actually still engaged, slightly annoying. So you've got to be a little bit careful. So particularly if you're starting a bike, even if the bike says neutral, it's definitely worth just putting the clutch in. The clutch is something we'll talk about in another video. It's definitely worth putting the clutch in just in case you're in a false neutral. Or what you could do is leave the clutch out. And to be absolutely sure, you can just roll the bike backwards and forwards just to see if the gearbox is engaged with the engine there. But most of the time, the, the, the neutral light is pretty accurate, but sometimes it can lie to you. So just be a little bit careful there. Okay, so how does it work? So uh, you've got five gears. So if you'd like to just imagine each one of my fingers represents a gear. This being first, then second, third, fourth, and fifth. And neutral is positioned between first and second gear. So if I me just slide my fingers in like that. So you've got the gear lever there. It's just between the first and the second gear there. So if we want to engage first gear, what do we do with the gear shifter? So hopefully you're thinking, ah, we need to push down. 
So what you do is you put your foot over the top of the gear shifter, or rather your toes of your foot, shall I say, and you push down. So now click, we're in first gear now. Now it doesn't matter how hard you push it, it's only gonna go one gear at a time, so that's it. And remember, first gear is, your, is at the bottom of the gearbox. So, excuse the aeroplane. It's at the bottom of the gearbox, so that's it. It's, that's it, it's not going any more than that. Absolutely rock solid underneath your foot. So that's first gear. So what we do is we pull away in first gear so we get some momentum up and you can hear the engine picking up. And when the engine's starting to rev a little bit high, you want to increase the speed a little bit more because don't forget first gear is only good for maybe 10 miles per hour at best. So we listen and when it's time to change gear, we want to be throttling off first because we'll get the power off. We're going to pull that clutch in. Then we're going to go to second. So where's second? So I look at my fingers. You can see second is up on the gear shifter. So make sure your foot is underneath the gear shifter. And what I do is once I'm in first, I'll get the, my toe underneath the gear shifter ready for the rest of the gears. So we're in first, toe back and then under, and, and then you're ready to push up. So up to second, you just give it a good firm push. Now don't forget, we've got to get through the neutral position. So it, although neutral isn't a separate gear, just it's, it's Think of it more of a, of a gap in the gearbox. It's, I mean, it's not, but imagine it's a gap in the gearbox. So it needs to be a good, firm push. So rather than just going tap, which can knock it into neutral, it needs to be a firm push. And, it, and you can almost hear like a double click, like click, click, as you're going through that new, neutral position. Because if you push it gently, I missed it there. Let's try again. Push it gently, and there you go. It's in the neutral position there. So if first to second, there needs to be a good shove on your toes. Otherwise, you could knock it into neutral. Uh, by accident and when you let the clutch out there's nothing there so toe underneath it firm push up to second bit of throttle release the clutch and off we go in second so with second gear slightly less torque more speed so this will bring it up to about sort of 20 miles per hour roughly again we're listening to the engine when it's revving a little bit high and we still want to increase the speed we want to then engage third gear so we're in second so where do we go for third it's up again so click up to third where do we go from third to fourth? Up again, and then up again for your fifth gear. Okay, now once you're in fifth gear, you can just relax on your foot. You can bring that back onto your foot peg there and just cruise along. And then when you're slowing down, you've got to be listening to the engine again. When it starts getting a little bit low on these little machines, I would suggest sort of thinking about changing down as soon as the engine speed drops to below, say two and a half thousand, maybe, maybe three thousand, two and a half, three thousand. So listening to the engine, as we're slowing down, we're thinking, okay, the sp engine speed's getting a little bit low now, so where do we need to go for fourth? Yep, down. Push it down, click into fourth. Click again into third. Click again into second, finally into first. So that's how you use the gears. And so it's all about listening to that engine pitch. If the engine's struggling, if, it, if it's revving uh, too low, so there's no torque, then you want to go down a gear. If it's revving too high, go up a gear. And you just go up, up, up the gears till you can get to your top speed and down the gears as you're slowing down. Also, try and make sure you're changing gear when the bike is physically rolling. Um, it's the, the, the problem with sequential gearboxes, which these bikes are, is that if the bike isn't physically moving forward, it can be very difficult to change gear. So let's say you've stopped the bike in fifth gear. Let's say you've just come to a complete stop, completely forgotten about the gears, the bike's in fifth, you realize, oh no, I'm in fifth gear. It's actually exceedingly hard to get the bike down into first. Very, very hard indeed. It can, it, gets, it can get itself stuck in fifth gear. And there is a way to recover from that. And that's just having the plush, plush, the clutch partially engaged. Okay, so have the clutch just biting a little bit and then it'll go down the gears, but try and avoid that. So as we're slowing down, we're going down the gears one at a time. As soon as that engine speed dips um, below sort of two and a half, three thousand, go down to the next gear. We let the clutch out, listen, and keep doing that over and over until we come to a complete stop and that'll end up in first gear okay and then if you want to get into neutral position so this is if you're parking your bike up so remember go all the way down to first neutral is between first and second so you just get your toe underneath it look at the neutral light and then just gently push it up until you see the green light pop up now sometimes you can push a bit hard which will take it up into second gear it's not a problem just keep looking at the neutral light foot over the top of it and gently down into neutral. Can be a bit of a black art getting it into neutral sometimes, particularly on the, on the, um, the cheaper machines. 
But sometimes it's just easier to switch off the engine and, uh, and put it into neutral that way because some bikes just simply won't go into neutral. Um, so there are, there are tricks of the trade to get the bike into neutral. If, if it's a good quality gearbox, it should go into neutral quite easily, but some of the cheaper bikes can be a bit of a problem getting it into neutral. So going up and down the gearbox, so here we are at the side of the road. So we're having a good look oh, in the right hand mirror, just seeing what's coming. Just gonna wait for these cars. So I'm gonna pop the bike into first gear. So throttle is closed, clutch is in, into first. Notice I've got my front brake covered. Once I'm in gear, I can then release the front brake. I've got my back brake covered now with my right foot. Looking in my right mirror. So it's all clear behind according to the mirror, but I must do the direct observation behind. So have a good look. And then a bit of throttle, start letting the clutch out smoothly. And then when the engine speed picks up, throttle off, clutch in, up to second, throttle on a little bit, clutch out smoothly. Keeping a good distance away from the park cars, watching out for the pedestrians, accelerating. Next gear, throttle off, clutch in, up to third, throttle on a little bit, clutch out smoothly. And then turning left at the end here. So it's mirrors signal. So I'm throttling down, leaving the throttle off now, clutch is in, a bit of back brake, click it down the gears, click, 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 clutch is still in. I've got enough energy to get myself to the end of the road here. Just using the rear brake there. You can use the front brake if you've got a bit more speed than I had. Back brake's great for slowing down gently. So back up through the gears. Throttle off, clutch in, change gear, throttle on a little bit, clutch out smoothly. Accelerate. Throttle on, clutch in, change gear, throttle on a little bit, clutch out smoothly. And one more time, so throttle off, clutch in, change up, throttle on a little bit, clutch out smoothly. So all the while, once, I'm in, once I've got the bike in first gear, then I get my toe underneath the gear shifter. So it's ready to go through the rest of the gears. Um, when I'm just cruising along like this, my foot will be off the gear shifter and just the ball of my foot will be resting on my foot peg. So when you're slowing down for a turn, you might not need first gear, so you go down gears at a time. You don't do the block gear change, that's reserved for when you're going to be stopping or come very, very close to stopping. So at a junction, roundabout, traffic lights. So we're just going to be slowing down to take the next right. So listening to the engine. So throttle off, cl clutch in, down the gears, clutch out smoothly, mirrors, signal right, and a quick look over my shoulder, make sure no one's overtaking me. Engine's getting a bit low again. Throttle, uh, clutch in, down the gears, clutch out smoothly, and one more gear because I'm getting really slow now. And then a quick lifesaver before I turn there. A gear changing just comes with practice. You've just got to listen to the engine. And if it's protesting, so it's getting a bit low, then you need to go down a gear. If it's revving too high, go up a gear. And as I say, it's just practice. Okay, so that covers gears and how we use them.